information is uh, the issue we play. Yeah. This is Paxton's versus uh, whole blood. I will just take you uh, one or two analogies just to uh, request all the clinicians to start using component therapy. So why myself and Kavita are together is uh, so during my PG tenure, I never stepped into the blood bank. Maybe only when we had postings, but I never showed interest there. But when this challenge was posed to me in 2004, when we had to start a new medical college and a blood bank, so then it was Dr. Kavita who accompanied me. Only two of us, we started the, the blood bank. When we started the little learning uh, ABCD, and so we have come up to a level where we have a nice component uh, separation unit. Of, of course, next is uh, AFRS is that uh, we are looking for. Next. See, from home to two, we all need blood. And transfusions are an integral part of delivering quality health care. And no hospital is complete without a good transfusion medicine department. And as Dr. Ganga Pillai was telling, yes. So this is one the MCA criteria also, especially for post graduate Since a lot men, they're looking for component therapy, a component, a blood bank, but components. The blood bank and we always say it's a storehouse. So which is supporting the physicians. Dr. Gangapili has written a very nice book. This is on blood banking and transfusion medicine. So we all wonder what is blood banking and what is transfusion medicine. So we are now uh, as pathologists away from the storehouse and entering into the area of therapeutics, that is transfusion medicine. So this is laboratory medicine plus clinical activity plus managerial function. This managerial function, I tell you, administrate as an administrator, I think blood bank officer must be very, very efficient. So more than working in the laboratory, so managerial action and administration are very important for any blood bank officer. Uh, we have two blood bank officers who come from uh, Dharwad also. I think they also could contribute for the next, uh, 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 the end of the session, 10 to 15 minutes, what we have uh, discussing about the do's and don'ts. I just wanted to skip these slides, but uh, uh, I'm just taking out this because the other part, what I wanted to speak, is already uh, spoken by Dr. Ganga Pillai. So this is about history of uh, blood banking or how blood transfusion started. So if you don't know history, then you don't know anything. This is like a leaf that not will be like a leaf that does not know that it's a part of the tree. So let us just go through the history. So for example, this CME definitely goes into the history of KBN because this is the first CME which is credited with, uh, I, I think awarded it to credit hours. So we always remember. So then from there, I think all the CMEs and conferences, people would definitely go in for this uh, uh, credit hour, credit hours award, awarding next. So it was Richard Lawyer who performed the first authenticated blood transfusion. What was it? It was just animal to animal transfusion that he did. So he, it kept examinated dogs alive by connecting artery to vein. So that also Dr. Ganga was uh, telling somewhere. So artery to vein through a quill. So that was the port. This is how uh, uh, it started. So then uh, we had lab blood transfused into a young woman. See how the species difference and what does it make. Then they all saw, he reported that this woman passed urine as black as soon. So there was transfusion reaction then. It's chemolytic reaction. This is a picture of the black blood being infused, transfused to the man. So then infusion experiments. So will the standard injective colors dies into the arteries and when he did this at the base of the brain. So now we all know, we call this as circle of villas. So then transfusions in the 18th century were done only sporadically and uh, were generally annual 
to human. And this was thought of, so why this transfusion? Maybe a cure for mental uh, aberration as a youth portion for the aged? Or uh, reciprocal uh, trans transfusion suggested as a cure for marital discord? So bladder, blood was thought to carry the characteristics of the donor recipient. Even today, our recipients and the donors have a lot of doubts, but they keep asking, especially the recipient. So if he receives the blood of a donor who has certain characteristics, you now he wonders or he's worried whether those characteristics could be uh, got or uh, transferred to him through blood transfusion. Next. 19th century, uh, what happened was they showed that some same species transfusions were more efficacious than uh, the interspecies transfusions which were occurring earlier. Uh, then, however, there's animal to human transfusions were performed even after knowing that same species is better, they were performed in 1890s. I'm sure all of us recognize this great Nobel laureate, Landsteiner, Karl Landsteiner. So, with his display of the blood groups, so we we'll won't further. Next. Next. So, major innovations occurred in the 20th century. So, all these. Started. Next. So initially, you see how the blood was bled into a citrated class and then how it was immediately transfused into the recipient. Next is blood in bottles. I'm sure most of the seniors who are here they remember this blood in, uh, blood, uh, uh, in bottles. When I donated, the first time when I was a medical student, he has those bottles. He wants it one bottle of blood. So they were all in bottles. But what was the disadvantage? The bottles were reused. And uh, of course, incomplete cleaning of the bottles led to pyrogenic reactions. And air embolism was said to be more common at that time. Next. Then the plastic bags, see 1949. So plastic bags were disposable, and then because they were flexible, and they helped a facilitated separation of the components. So this is how this history of transfusion started from animals, and then became so popular to humans, and then now. If you are looking at this history, so we are moving from whole blood transfusion to component therapy. That is very important. And we found it very difficult to bring in this change. So whole blood to fat cells, whole blood to fat cells. So a lot of questions, a lot of resistance, but still, we were positive, we were optimistic, and then our clinicians. So they changed their attitude. And now most of our clinicians in the Darwin Gerek, all the hospitals, even including the private, so they are using, they are demanding for taxes. So that's how our journey went through. Yeah. So this was uh, 2004, end of 2004 and 2005, they started uh, the blood bank. So that was uh, for the whole blood. And what happened was Davangiri being endemic for dengue. We found lots of cases with thrombocytopenia who needed platelets. We found it very difficult to cater to the needs of this, especially children who were bleeding because of thrombocytopenia. So what we did was we started uh, requesting the neighboring districts where component therapy was. One was Shimoga, then uh, next was Gobi. So it was very difficult for the patients to get platelets, transport platelets, get, go there and then bring it and that had to be infused. So within one year, so they said components, component therapy has to be started. So we had to upgrade the blood bank and that we took it as a challenge and of course with the support of our management we could get this and we, were, we got the license also uh, uh, through our uh, uh, authorities. So you saw that uh, 
typical library black bag when it was started with a wooden door. So I, I just want to say that this is from there to probably which looks better, the metallic bar or the aluminium and glass. And then from the roti box which we use for a bleeding purpose to the door approach. So this is just upgradation. So we didn't start it from the beginning. Uh, two things are very important here. This is a plastic bag system and the technology that helped or that is very important for the component preparation that helped the evolution of component therapy. Uh, we all know what is blood, but when you talk to this uh, uh, people, the public, they say it is vital fluid. Where do we get it from? This is one of vital people. So this vital fluid got from vital people he is very important for any of our blood banks to function properly, efficiently and to cater to the needs of the clinician or to involve ourselves in the therapeutic aspect of the of, of our treatment purpose. And uh, for this motivation is very, very important. So we need to go to people, so we need to educate them, create awareness about the blood donations. We have a couple of doctors uh, who, the, who just you know, donate to create awareness in front of the people. So this is like motivation that's very, very important. So what is blood made up of? Yes, all of us know what, what is blood made up of because we have been learning about this since our physiology days. So then what is the whole blood? So the terminology is what we are using and just reinforcing. So whole blood is an unseparated blood that is collected into an approved container containing an anticoagulant preservative solution. So that is whole blood. So blood product. So when we use this term blood product, blood product is any therapeutic substance that is prepared from the human blood. So all the products which Dr. Gunnapillai was uh, talking about. Then what is a blood component? Blood component is a constituent of the blood that is separated from the whole blood. So we know there are cellular components, we know that there are plasma components. So this is how you know, we prepare these components. You know how they are separated, what all could be prepared. So coming to packs, it's all of us know about hematocrit. Hematocrit or PCB. We define this as volume occupied by the red cells in a given volume of blood. This is usually expressed as percentage. Then what is this packed cell or uh, red cell concentrate? So we call this also as uh, plasma reduced blood. So this is a red cell concentrate which is nothing but packed cells but having a hematocrit of 70 to 75 percent. So this tells us about the concentration of RBCs that is present in that unit. So this is whole blood. We have a bag here. Then we have the packed cells. So that is, packed cell is whole blood without plasma. So whole blood is separated into packed cells and then red cells. So packed cells are a concentrated source of red blood cells that we made in small amount of plasma. So we retain little amount of plasma uh, after centrifugation. So these are excellent source of RBCs for anemic patients who need of the additional oxygen carrying capacity. Again, uh, this is uh, dealt with in detail already. So this is an analogy I just want to take. So there's a glass of juice here. This is a glass of water. So which one would you prefer when you're very, very thirsty or really thirsty? Then I get some answers. Because this I prepared for our uh, postgraduate students. Very, very thirsty person. A very thirsty, what do you look for? Is it a glass of 
uh, juice. So ask if it's called this as uh, mango juice or is it a uh, glass of water? Yeah, many people said a glass of water because that could quench the thirst. I said even uh, juice could quench the thirst. But then they said it all depends on the situation where this is called for. Suppose we have had our lunch, no heavy lunch, then you are you 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 feel like uh, drinking uh, or feel thirsty. Then definitely you go for water. Then they say yes, I'm a diabetic. So if I want to quench my thirst, definitely I look for water. These were the answers I get. It's exactly true. So why load a diabetic or a person with full stomach with juice if he is thirsty? Don't you think this juice, the glucose component of the sugar which is there, could be extracted and given to a person who is hypoglycemic? Or take only the water and give it to a person who is uh, thirsty to quench his thirst and take the fruit pulp, the fruit portion and give it to a person who is, who is in need of fibers and vitamins and all that. That's the exact thing we are looking for in component therapy. So why give the entire blood, whole blood? So where the need is only RBCs. So where the need is only plasma, where the need is only cryo. So no transfuse or infuse unnecessary things. So you have learned about the reactions that occur. So why call, uh, invite all this trouble and unnecessary reactions? So benefits of component therapy I just repeat because it is just one blood, one donor or one unit of blood that could save the of four lives. So there's only, if we are working in the blood, and we know the demand for the blood, and then uh, we struggle to go to the people, youth, the colleges, to get safe blood. So that is our motto, as Madam said, to give the right blood at the right time to the right person, and safe blood. And optimal use of blood resources, as I just said, uh, the difference between uh, a glass of water and a juice. And the components, required components, be transfused, so preserving the other components for other patients. And the risk of transfusion, very important transfusion induced reactions are minimal by just transfusing the required components. So all this is uh, uh, dealt with already. So minimize the cardiac overload, then uh, storage period can be enhanced as Said, so how platelets could be uh, preserved and uh, FFP and all that. Yes. So what are the products containing red cell? This is the reputation again. So product I told you is a therapeutic unit. So what we get? So it could be whole blood. I'm talking about products containing red cells. Whole blood or fresh blood or fat cells, optimal additive red cell suspension, leukocyte poor or leukocyte dependent red cells, and deglucidized blood cells and rejuvenated red cells, neocytes and neocytes. So fat cell preparation, I showed you a list of products that have red cells. We just deal with each of this. So first and foremost is fat cells, most commonly used blood product in any of the component laboratories or the blood banks. So then we have video demo and Dr. Harita would be uh, talking about this. Then optimal additive, additive red cell suspension. So the red cell packs to which 100 ml of a nutrient preservative solution is added. So we are not uh, anyway using this uh, the optimal additive red cell suspension. Then deglycerolized red blood cells, frozen red blood cells. So already the uh, Indications are dealt with. So red cells are frozen, thawed, glycerolized. So this has to be done within six days. And it is extended storage. Up to 10 years, we will store this precious red cells for red blood groups or whatever. Then you go depleted red cells. You know where and what. So if you have uh, answered her question, so it is during prior to storage that you are uh, depleting the leukocytes that you show the winters also. 
There are a few more uh, uh, filters that we're going to show you and how this uh, could be used to uh, prepare these nuclear de depleted red cells. Then uh, this is again uh, dealt with uh, in detail. I, I, I will just skip all the slides. Then rejuvenated uh, solution. So there's something called as rejuvenol. So it has these components. Red cells are incubated with the uh, 37 degree uh, at the build this solution for 37 degree centigrade for one hour wash time, then used within 24 hours. So whole blood. Hitherto we were using the whole blood. Now the request for whole blood is minimal, but not totally ill. A cardiac unit, a cardiothoracic surgeons use a lot of uh, whole blood. I think that's uh, uh, where we get uh, uh, the request, a lot of requests from uh, uh, for whole blood. So this is a 450, this could be collected in a 450 ml bag or 350 ml bag. The question we always receive from the donors is how much of blood you are going to bleed? So 450 ml bag already has 63 ml of anticoagulant. So we are definitely bleeding 450 ml of blood. That means the amount there is 450 plus 63 of the anticoagulant. And this has a hematocrit of 35 to 45 percent. So look at the difference. The packed cells have a hematocrit up to 75 percent. So they can do better than anemic patients. But this does not have any functional platelets because we store the blood in the refrigerator but platelets for them to be viable they have to be at 22 to 24 degrees. Then what is a unit of issue? We say one donation, a unit or a pack. And storage is in the refrigerator 2 to 6 degrees centigrade. So all the refrigerators of the blood bank have a thermoregulation that char temperature maintenance. So when the do's and don'ts and the problems and solutions, we are just talking about the type of refrigerator that I